Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to ERB. No, not Epic Rap Battles, not as cool as that. No, Elden Ring Builds. I've been playing so much Elden Ring that honestly, I figured I should just make a YouTube video, put my energy into something more productive. Consider this a pilot, maybe there'll be another, maybe there won't be, but at the very least, I do hope you enjoy this video. Anyway, the concept behind the video is I've been playing so much and my favorite thing to do is to actually start brand new characters and then build the character out from scratch to see how long it would take to get strong if I wanted to do this build and then to beat the game subsequently. It reminded me of an old US magazine, Tips and Tricks, which actually had a section dedicated to reviewing armored core builds and how they fared against other cores, another FromSoft title, ironically. So I thought, hey, I guess I'll kind of do the same thing here, starting with some builds that I've played. For this video, I'll be looking at a typical bow build. Now, bows don't always have the greatest rep in FromSoft games, especially not Soulsborns, but Elden Ring really elevated the gameplay, so much so that by the time I completed the game and beat every boss with bows, I never really felt weak, even if I wasn't utilizing their full potential, and that's a good sign. For the build I used, I'm really just looking to carry around one great bow and one long or short bow. Now, the Great Bow is excellent at punishing long recovery windows and abusing huge boss arenas, while a traditional bow or short bow is used for faster opponents and applying status effects. Bows and short bows have an expanded moveset, including jump shots, rolling shots, and even crouching shots for the short bow, so finding windows of attack is way easier with them. Honestly, you can even use some of these to confuse enemy AI, some of the more slippery ones that like to dodge projectiles, as they don't really reply to these things as you would expect them to. Now for great bows, you have two easy options early on and then one that takes a bit more work. The regular great bow can be gotten early by taking a trip up to the Atlas Plateau and with the Reign of Arrows Ash of War, it's a pretty solid option. Unfortunately, upgrading it to plus 25 takes a while, much longer than the Somberstone weapons, which I will be focusing on in this video. Now the Golem Great Bow you can farm from any of the Golems that have a large bow. Most people would go to Kaled near the Great Jar early on, but its Ash of War can't be changed. And from what I can see, the through and through Ash of War doesn't seem to be working properly. I just couldn't ever get it to activate or take my MP no matter what I did. So not really sure what's going on there. Now the bow I went with was the most obvious one, the Lion Great Bow. This is a Remembrance weapon from the Star Scourge Remembrance, and its action is basically the same as Reign of Arrows. You'll always use this with Radon's Arrows, which have a steep cost of 800 runes per arrow, but they're well worth every shot, as long as you don't miss. Radon's rain on a medium to large-sized enemy when they are stationary is massive, and the regular shot can hit from very long distances and even knock high poise opponents off balance, such as the ever-so-frustrating Crucible Knights. Now for the traditional bow, you also have a lot of options, but I landed on the black bow, which is easily upgraded with somber stones, has decent stats, and possesses the barrage skill, which we will abuse on quite a few bosses. If you're wondering about a crossbow as well, I didn't use them, but I'd probably go with the pulley crossbow. You can get it really early on, and it's basically a semi-automatic, so it's nice if you want something a little different. Now for arrows, serpent arrows are definitely going to be the standard. You can buy as many as you want from them from the merchant in Western Dragonsboro and Kaled for 120 runes apiece, and they do apply heavy poison. However, expect to make a variety of arrows throughout the game, including blood arrows, cold arrows, sleep arrows, and a few rot arrows. Unfortunately, the methods of obtaining materials for rot arrows are not too generous, so only use these on bosses that are susceptible to rot and specifically ones that frustrate you. With the weapons done, the armor isn't really anything too special. I just went for the glam with the Radon set, which worked fine, but if you want to use some strength or dexterity improving headpieces or any of the other special armor, you know, feel free. The white mask is nice if you're using blood arrows more for the attack boost, or maybe one of the dexterity headpieces. You could also maybe use the body piece that makes it harder to detect you, but me, I just went with Fashion Ring. For talismans, there are two essentials, and the rest are at your discretion. Number one is the Arrow Sting Talisman. This can be found atop the tower right next to the impassable Great Bridge Grace in Southern Kaled. This just makes your arrows hit stronger. Of course you're going to want this. The Arrow's Reach Talisman is also great, as it allows you to better abuse large boss arenas and even just casually snipe enemies while exploring from further away. This you can grab right at the start of the game. Go up the hill past Stormgate, turn left when you reach the gold tree, and enter the tower that was hanging over the entrance to Stormgate. 
There's some enemies in the way, but get past them and open the chest to grab this talisman. If you're in a small arena, consider replacing this with something else, but if you're in a large arena, you're probably going to want this. For any other talismans, feel free to explore your options. Radagon Sword Seal is an obvious favorite, and if you're abusing any statuses such as Bleed, Poison, or Rot, any of the talismans that boost attack when those things are applied nearby definitely help as well. Equiplo talismans also help a lot early, since wearing all this stuff is actually pretty heavy, especially if you're like me and you went with the very, very heavy Radon set. Erdtree's Favor and an Arsenal Charm are really, really good for this. Finally, bear in mind, some seemingly more obvious charms don't really work on arrows, it seems, such as the successive attack or jump attack effects. I'm not sure why, but I just couldn't proc any of these, so I guess they just don't work. I also occasionally use an FP increasing talisman. This was because one of the summons I was using in the later part of the game was just a lot of FP, so I needed something to make sure I could summon them at least once at the start of the fight. But if you're using some of the cheaper ones, then that won't be much of an issue. Now, finally, what stats are you going to want? Well, fortunately, this is a pretty straightforward build, but it does require a lot of stats to really feel complete. Going deep into strength index for damage is a must, but you'll also want between 35 and 40 vigor, and probably between 30 and 35 endurance, depending on your talismans and what armor set you're actually wearing. Early game to bypass this, wear lighter armor and only wear one of your bows at a time. Don't try to equip both your great bow and something else, because they do weigh a lot, until you can power level through enough to boost your endurance enough. So after I was done recording and editing, I remembered that I didn't mention the physic, which honestly, there's a reason. There's not really much interesting you can do with it. Yeah, it can buff like strength and dexterity for a bit of damage, but I ended up going with dexterity and the shield from the opaline crystal tier. So honestly, you have complete freedom to either go with something that is reactive, defensive, or purely offensive, but there's nothing special for the bow build from this. For the early game, I started as a samurai. Not because it started with a bow either, just I think having the Uchi Katana and a decent stat spread early sure is nice. This is the toughest part of the run because the bow is absolutely not competitive early on. We want to maybe grab some smithing stones and upgrade the Uchi Katana itself a little bit to get things started. Then we can get the bows and work towards that after a few hours. Fortunately, getting the plus 9 is pretty easy thanks to all the smithing stones in Liernia and Limgrave. And plus 12 is pretty easy over in Kaelin. Both of our bows also use somber stone, so you don't have to worry about wasting these early on. First, get Torn and then quickly grab the ranged talisman just because, and then we can start our journey to get both of our bows. I always do three things at the start of the game unless there's a reason for me not to. I get the left deck this medallion at Fort Height, the right one from Fort Faroth, and then I slay Grail for some early levels, with a Goldfowl foot preferably. This lets me fast track to Lindell all the way to the north of Valernia with a few levels under my belt to get some later game items. In this case, we can't pick up the Black Bow right away, or at least I'm not going to at this point because we need to get past the Draconic Tree Sentinel in order to do that, and that's probably not going to be too fun of a time at this point. However, going to Landell automatically starts Radon's festival in Redmain Castle, so we can backtrack to Kaelid and fight Radon for his remembrance already. With a plus 9 Uchi Katana and the levels you got from slaying Grail, you probably won't have too bad of a time, but feel free to get more levels elsewhere if you feel the need. With his remembrance, we can get the Lion Longbow and begin buying arrows. However, these are very expensive at this point, 800 a pop. Fortunately, beating any shard bearer in the game opens up one of the best farm spots in the game. As soon as Radon is beaten, go to Round Table Hold and talk to the Two Fingers. Then head to the Rose Church in Liernia and start Vare's questline. He'll ask you to invade three players in order to progress it. If you want a PvP, go ahead and have a blast. If not, just enter and either lose or flee with the severed finger three times. This advances to him giving you a blank sheet to douse in maiden blood. To find the nearest maiden, I head up near the Grand Lift and through the frenzied city up to the church nearby to take care of this. You'll be invaded, so either run past the NPC and grab the Grace and the Bloody Maiden, or fight him to get him out of your hair and then do all that stuff right after. Return to Vare with the Bloody Sheet and advance his dialogue until he gives you the Pure Blood Knight's Medal. This lets you teleport to the Mogwin Dynasty Mausoleum, one of the very, very endgame areas. Backtrack through the Marsh area to the Palace Approach Ledge Road Grace, that's a mouthful, and get a bow and some arrows ready, which, fortunately, you're already doing for this video. Shoot the bird across from the gap, lure it off the edge, collect runes, and then either level up or mass buy arrows using this whenever you want. I always come here to get my runes to buy more arrows. 
Now that we've got the brawn of our build with the great bow and all these runes and arrows, we really need the regular bow for the brains. Now if you really want to, you could invest in one of the early game bows or short bows now, especially since you can already rush to buy serpent arrows and Kaelid because you've got infinite runes from the farm that I showed you. I'd also recommend grabbing the Mimic Tier Ashes by heading into the Crater at this point, or even grabbing Oleg from the Fringe Folk Hero's Grave in the starting cave behind the key guarded fog room that you pass at the beginning. These will help you get your footing in fights while you get used to your bow, or buy you time to load up on your great bow shots. With these things, almost all of Limgrave, Laernia, and whatever's left in Kayla should be at your mercy. So go around, beat all the bosses, get some extra levels, and then we can continue on. With that, we'll head up to Lane Dell and beat the Draconic Tree Sentinel to get into the capital. You could also have progressed through the underground through the Meteor Crash Site until getting to the Deep Root Depths, but you'll need to defeat a few pretty annoying bosses to do this, so pick your poison. Once in the capital, we can get the Black Bow. Just jump to the lower levels before climbing the rooftops and finding it up there. From this point on, your job is simply to abuse status weaknesses with the Black Bow and then hit him for big damage with the Great Bow whenever possible. Just make sure to keep a ready supply of Serpent and Radon's arrows, while also preparing some specialized status arrows for each boss fight. For example, did you know that the God Skin bosses are incredibly susceptible to sleep? You can just infinitely sleep them if you're only fighting one, or even just sleep them before preparing a Great Bow attack for big damage. If an enemy is susceptible to bleed, well then abuse bleed arrows and bleed boosting equipment and talismans to get more attack power. Frostbite susceptibility? This lowers enemy damage absorption by 20%, so you should definitely try to apply this if possible. You can only really equip two types of arrows at once, including between your great and normal arrows, so you may have to occasionally menu if you want to apply a lot of status effects, and your summons can really help give you the time you need in order to do that, or you just gotta hope that a boss gives you eh, just a few seconds to go through the menus without panicking. But these status arrows just help so much. If an enemy gives you the chance, you can even use Barrage, which is the main reason I picked up the Black Bow in the first place, to lay into them with a ton of arrows and apply the status effects more quickly. Now, if you're being chased by an opponent that is very fast, jump and rolling shots are king. Jump shots even occasionally fool more slippery opponent AI into not dodging as frequently, and are a relatively low stamina means of accessing both mobility and damage. If an opponent is large or the arena is massive, throw on the range talisman and make them pay for teleporting away from you. Or just look for a window to blow something up with Radon's rain, like this clip. <laughs> I mean, that's what I expected to happen, but... Now the pros of this build are apparent. For one, it's ranged. Generally speaking, ranged gameplay gives the player a level of comfort they might not have when they're right up against their opponents all the time, and that remains true here. The wide array of status effects and their availability is also a big plus, only sort of diminished by the annoying process of farming rot arrows. But all the other statuses you'll be able to get are much easier to obtain en masse. Finally, the Great Bow makes some of the more annoying opponents in the game way more manageable, especially the heavier opponents, like I mentioned earlier, the Crucible Knights, which are actually staggered by Radon's arrows most of the time. The cons, however, are also apparent. Needing a steady supply of arrows can be tedious, especially when you want a bunch of different ones. It also has a really, really tough early game, as the good bows and great bows just come from tough fights or later areas, so you may be less bowful early on, I guess. The commitment of the slower Great Bow is also a bit tough to get used to, and Radon's reign is not the most accurate. If they move even a little bit, or they're a little, you know, I guess kind of squiggly and squirmy and whatnot, even if they're kind of large, they can sometimes just get away from it, and it's kind of annoying. Finally, the late game makes for a much more creative solution requirement, because some bosses are either too fast to use the Great Bow efficiently, or too beefy to feel good about the sheer number of arrows it's going to take to kill them. This is why abusing status effects or windows of opportunity are key. You might cheese a few bosses, but it's not going to be a build that completely overwhelms the entire game. I think that's a pretty fair experience and a good example of decent balancing for the bow build. Overall, I'd give the build an 8 out of 10. It loses a few points because it has a fairly tough early and late game, and the summons definitely make a huge difference in opening up availability for you to use some of your more powerful skills. Some bosses are a little too squirrely as well, and on top of that, any boss that cannot be afflicted with status effects is immediately going to be a worse time. You're going to have to be looking for better attack windows instead of looking to abuse whatever they're weak against. 
However, if you have a deft arm and you're willing to even manually aim some of your arrows, you can even make use of some weaknesses that I didn't get to in my playthrough. So there's even room for improvement over what I've produced for you. Anyway, that's going to be a wrap for, again, the supposed pilot of this uh, Elden Ring build style video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And if you have a recommendation for a build that you played through the game, I'm willing to take some submissions in the comment section of the video below. I'll build it from scratch and see how a new player would technically go about it on a new character. Anyway, thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.